So, so far, what we have observed when we looked at our plant and our animal cell is the eukaryotic form of cells. But we need to understand that when we talk about the dominant forms of life on this planet, we're really talking about the prokaryotic cells. And so these are ubiquitous cells that are found everywhere on the planet. And to give you an example of how many prokaryotic cells there are on the planet, let's take you for example. And so your body is covered in prokaryotic cells. They're on your skin, they're in your hair, they're underneath your fingertips, but they're also inside you. And so in your mouth, in your gut, you have prokaryotic cells. In your gut alone, you have trillions of prokaryotic cells that live in a symbiotic relationship with you. So you as a single organism have trillions of these guys that you're living in harmony with. So multiply that by all the humans on the planet, multiply that by all the elephants, all the squirrels, all the dogs, all the cats who also have the bacteria in their guts and on their bodies, and then you have to add in all the prokaryotes that are in the air, in the water, on the surface, and you begin to get some idea of the scale of the number of prokaryotics that exist on the planet. So we truly are a world that's dominated by the prokaryotic variety of cells. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to learn, well, how do we analyze those cells? This is particularly important when we're looking at things like microbial infections and trying to determine who is that microbe and what is the best way that we can fight that microbe. To do that, we often need to be able to observe that microorganism. We're going to do that by growing them in what we call culture on these things called petri dishes. And if you look at this petri dish close, you'll see that it has some type of substance that's on the bottom of the dish. So this is how we hold the dish up. And what's on the bottom is what we call auger. Think of auger as a nutrient medium. We have everything the prokaryotic cell needs in order for it to grow and divide. Because only when it grows and divides can we analyze and observe the prokaryotic cells. And so that's what we see on this particular thing. So let's look at how we're going to apply our prokaryotic samples to this auger so that we can grow them. So, to apply our samples to the petri dish, we first go out and we collect our samples. So let's say for, in this case, I wanted to know what kind of bacteria is growing on the surface of this countertop. I need to first collect the bacteria, and so to do that, we're going to use our Q-tips as a mechanism of collection. And so in this particular case, I'm simply going to rub my area of interest so that I can collect the bacterial cells. Remember previously I told you bacteria are ubiquitous. So even though you can't see anything, there are bacterial cells on that surface. Then I want to apply the Q-tip to my um, Petri dish, but I don't want to dig into the auger because bacteria are usually surface growing organisms. And so if you dig into the auger, they're not going to grow very well. You want them to only grow on the surface. So very gently, I'm going to roll my Q-tip on the surface of the auger. I now have applied my bacteria to my auger. Now I need to determine what are the conditions under which I want them to grow in. And we can, as you see in your lab manual, we can grow them in room temperature under dark conditions, room temperature under light conditions, in refrigerated conditions, or at body temperature. And so I want you to think a little bit about where would I collect bacteria and what would be the best environment to grow them in. So because you may be collecting bacteria in different environments, um, we want to make sure that we protect ourselves from any harmful bacteria that may be growing in our petri dish. 
Remember we call those harmful bacteria pathogenic bacteria. And those are bacteria that can make us very sick. So to protect ourselves, we're going to seal our Petri dish. So I'm going to take some wax paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly pull it until it fully seals where the two halves of the dish meet. Okay. I am now ready to put this in its proper growing environment. So after about 24 hours to 48 hours of growth in our selected environment, we then can see the results of our experiment. In this particular case, what we did was we swabbed two areas. One was a shoe, the other was a doorknob. And we wanted to make a comparison between the bacterial growth that was um, present on both of those surfaces. Okay? You will also see that we have incubated them in different environments to show you how bacteria grow under different conditions. The refrigerator, room temperature dark, room temperature light, and at body temperature in an incubator. So let's take a look at these various results and let's discuss why we see what we see in those different petri dishes. So as we're discussing these results, I want you to follow along in your lab manual so that you can make note of these results. So the first one we're going to look at is the fridge. Remember that we um, sampled two different environments. Here is the shoe and here is the doorknob. And notice that we got substantial amount of growth in the shoe, no growth for the doorknob. Okay? And in here, you want to discuss why would you think there would be a difference in the growth between these two environments at refrigerated conditions. Next, we move to the room temperature dark. Again, you can see that there is a significant difference in the amount of growth for the shoe versus the doorknob. Also notice that for each of these bacterial colonies, which are the visible circle-like circle objects you see on your plate, those are a bacterial colony. Notice that I have many different varieties. Okay? Each color and each shape is a different type of bacteria. Then we move to room temperature light. Again, notice the significant difference in the two environments. And lastly, we move to body temperature. Okay. So as you're analyzing these results, I want you to think about why there would be a difference between the shoe and doorknob, as well as why there is a difference in the amount of growth between the different growth environments. So the last part of our experiment is we want to look at the way in which bacteria grow under different environments as it applies to hand washing. So sometimes you always hear the debate, does the type of soap matter? Does how long you wash your hands matter? And so in this particular case, you have the opportunity to test those different hypotheses. You can test whether you're going to use regular hand soap versus antibacterial hand soap. You can test whether you're going to wash your hands for the usually standard five to 10 seconds that most of us do wash our hands, or whether we're gonna do the full two minutes that's often recommended. So by doing that, we get a chance to see, does it really um, impair the growth of bacteria on our skin? And we always think about that because we're thinking about transmission, okay? Through your fingertips, you can transmit a lot of bacteria to other surfaces or other individuals. And so it's always important for you to thoroughly wash your hands when you feel like you have been exposed to any bacteria that may be pathogenic. So to get a sample of the bacteria that's growing on our hands, we're simply going to, again, use our Petri dish and apply the bacteria to the auger. In this particular case, I'm going to use my fingers as my different um, environments. And so I always have a control. This is an unwashed finger that I simply apply to the auger. 
And again, you don't want to apply enough pressure while you break the auger. Once you make contact with the auger, that is enough for the bacteria to be left on the auger. Then I'm going to use my remaining fingers to apply different soaps and different times. All right, so here we see the results of our hand washing experiment. So here we have two different individuals, and in science, we like to do more than one replication in order for us to account for any anomalies that we're not expecting, and also to make sure that our data statistically is, can be trusted. So we see that as we look at the different quadrants, we have no treatment. So this is where no finger was applied to the auger. This is an unwashed hand. This is a hand that was washed with water only, no soap. And this is a hand that was washed with soap. And we see the same thing in our other sample, water, soap, unwashed, no finger was applied, okay? In this particular case, again, I want you to look at the difference in the bacterial growth among each quadrant on our Petri disk and try to explain why you either do or do not see a difference between the dirty versus the water, the dirty versus the soap, the soap versus the water, and the no treatment versus all the other quadrants.